Hey, welcome back you guys. I'm sure some of you have been in this position where you have a really annoying beam hanger to hide and you can't just drywall over it or there'll be a massive hump and so you have to find some way to hide it and have it be strong enough to not crack down the road. So my most preferred way, if I can, is just to kind of chew out the back side of it. So I did this by doing multiple cuts with a knife and just scraping and scraping and scraping until it was gone. This is 5 8 board. I only had to take about a quarter inch out, so the drywall is still plenty strong there. But for this face and this face, it's just half inch drywall and the hanger isn't recessed enough to be able to cover it nicely. On this one, I actually tried to carve it out first, but it's just half inch board and I only had about a quarter inch of drywall left there. I mean, honestly, that's so weak that by the time you go to even start taping it, like putting pressure on it with your taping knife, you're probably gonna crush it and break it anyways. So I decided to just cut it off entirely. There was also one in behind here and I just chose to drill holes where the bolts were. And there's a little hump in the wall right there. You can see from the gap there and the gap there, but it's in a closet, so it'll get straightened out with corner bead. And this one, even though they made an attempt to recess it, it wasn't quite enough. So I decided to just hack out the drywall there. Probably didn't need to cut that much out. So the first thing we need to do is pre-fill it. And I'm just gonna get enough mud to pre-fill the whole job mixed up. This is 45 minute. It's a nice strong mud. This brand doesn't have the best adhesion though. So I got a little trick up my sleeve for that because we want good adhesion. That's a bit on the thick side. Just throw a little water in there with the brush and clean the sides at the same time. So for adhesion, I'm gonna be adding some all-purpose heavyweight. I got some Murica mud here. <laughs> Actually went to the States to get this stuff. I'm not adding a lot, just enough to increase workability and adhesion because the all-purpose has really good adhesion. Okay, I don't think we wanna go any thinner than that. All right, this stuff is definitely ready. Normally I like to use this product called Concrete Fill that we get in Canada. It's a really good product for this sort of stuff, but this will be good enough. So this is just what people call hot mud. And I'm gonna make sure to really get it up, up in there. It's gonna probably take two coats to get it flat enough. We'll see because it likes to slump a lot. So that's good enough for a first pass right here. And this is nice hard mud. This is close to Durabond, but not quite. And you don't wanna leave it on really thick and globby because it's very hard, difficult to sand and scrape down once set. That was actually better before I did that pass. Now it's empty. All right, that's good. Nice and flat. So the next thing we gotta do is scrape down the high spots. I think this bag of mud is old or off because it kicked off in like 20 minutes. 25 minutes and it should have been 40 minutes. The good news is I can now use it while it's kicking off to really flatten this out because it's super stiff now. So that gets us closer to done the video, but it screws me up for the rest of my job pre-filling. 
But now I'm stuck with the problem of how to get this stuff out of the bucket. Oh, so annoying when it kicks off. Yeah, like this stuff is just all set up. Uh, let me know in the comments if this has happened to you before. There we go. Tapping the side of the bucket right here worked. Now that this is dry, we can tape it. So this is pretty easy. First, we're gonna do the corner, just to get that nice and solid and taken care of. I'm now using taping mud. I'm actually using all-purpose heavyweight, which is what a lot of people in the US use for taping mud. And we have our creased corner tape right there. Get that nice and centered. I'll often hold it when it's this small just to keep it in place as I do the first couple passes. Being careful not to take all the mud out. It's really important to leave some under, otherwise you are going to get blisters. Okay, and if we look really carefully, we can see there's only about a half inch here that still needs to be covered. So we can easily do that with just one more tape. So in this case, it's just about overlapping tapes. Again, make sure to leave some mud under that tape. There we go. So it's covering over this by about an inch and it's covering this one by about an inch. That's a good strong overlap. There's plenty of mud underneath the tape still. This should cover pretty easily in a couple of coats. And for the next one, we are going to use six inch wide Fiba Fuse. This, this stuff is good. It has so many different uses. I use it all the time. Just gotta get these staples out of here. But yeah, I love this stuff. It's basically a bounce fabric sheet. Actually bounce fabric sheets are actually stronger. <laughs> these tear quite easily. You know, as you can see, I can just pull a piece off just like that, but it's woven fiberglass, great product. And we just need a piece that is wide enough to cover this and we have an inch of overlap on each side. So that's great. I'm just gonna go with that right there. It tears very easily, easier than paper actually. And we're gonna do the same thing. Just put some mud on here. The nice thing about Fiba Fuse is you can put it on really thin because oh, it's hard for me to explain exactly why. Where is it? I gotta find the patch. <laughs> I've lost it. There's one edge, there's the other edge. So the nice thing about Fiba Fuse is that if you don't get enough mud underneath it, like in this pocket right here, you can add it from the top. So it's not self-adhesive like mesh tape. It does actually need mud to stick, but it's a very good product. Don't wipe it too hard though, because in my opinion, it's kind of fragile. And if you're pushing really hard with your knife, you're gonna fray it along the edge and then it's not gonna be very strong. And even though this stuff tears so easily, I'm pretty sure at least the manufacturers claim that once it's embedded in mud, it's stronger than paper and regular mesh tape. I don't know about that. I've never tested it in any way. I'm just messing around with this now. It's basically done. Tomorrow when I come back, I'll tape this corner and I'll put the corner beads on. But as you can see, this is like nice and packed in now. It's gonna be pretty flat because the Fiba Fuse lays really nice and flat. Yeah, overall, great product. I'm just sort of generally coating it so that when my corners go on, it goes nice and flat. Although I will be putting another couple of coats on it. So I'd say I'm definitely just playing with it at this point. Anyways, you guys, that is how to do it. So it is possible. What I used to do in the past was I would just overlap it with multiple layers of paper tape, making sure that I'm overlapping the tape, I'd say at least a half inch each time. And then you do wind up with a really strong patch. But anyways, that is how you deal with those hanger things. Um, 
dealt with a lot of them this way. I've never had a problem down the road. I would say that shaving out the back side of it is probably the most likely way to have a problem down the road because you get left with such a small little bit of drywall that I think that's way more prone to cracking over time than this thing that's packed full of super hard quick set and then has tapes over top of it. So that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and how you like to tackle these things. I want to say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter and I hope you're doing well. Okay, till the next one. Oh, and if you're wondering what that is, I dropped my six inch. I was working and I managed to drop it right on my neck. That's a first. Um, in spite of the mud kicking off too soon and dropping my knife on my neck, I'm doing well. See you guys.